On Friday morning, the leader of the free world, the most powerful person on earth, arguably, and inarguably the most influential person on Twitter, not named Little Nas X, got duped by the Babylon Bee. Yes, the inventor of the term fake news shared actual fake news. Like it says it's fake news on the website. Everybody check the servers because the simulation is glitching. 45 retweeted a satire site, the Babylon Bee, and it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. I've never been happier. I'm giddy right now. And not just because if he didn't realize it was satire, it makes him look dumb. I don't need any more of that, right? Between throwing paper towels and his dancing in the, oh man, I can't believe he just said that. Like 45, has done enough to make himself look stupid. He has gone full embarrassing dad at the restaurant right now. And my favorite Trump supporters in the world are the ones who get that, the ones who are just like, oh God, someone please take his phone away from him. The reason that I love it is because the President of the United States shared a fake news story and it's official, objective truth, has zero meaning anymore. It's out there. Like, the truth has become like the New York Jets. Like, it's real, it just doesn't matter anymore. And some people, including Seth Dillon, the CEO of the B, or say Trump knows, he's a fan of the site, and maybe, but Trump is many things, but a master of subtlety and nuance and irony, he's none of those things. More importantly, it doesn't matter, because he never clarified. He never said, no, guys, I know I was being sarcastic. I know that's a fake news site. So we don't know. Oh, we're just left to try and figure it out. And that's the state of the world right now. You have a group of people who think that he wasn't joking and a group of people who think he was joking. And even more importantly, you have a group of people who think that that's a true story because they didn't do the hard work of doing two extra clicks to see if it was real or not. What the B and other satire sites do is they base off of truth. There's a real story here. There's a real story about censorship. But what's the actual story? We don't know and we never no, because we're turning to the internet to tell us whether or not the internet is being honest. And that is hopeless because the internet has become a toddler that is telling you it doesn't have to go to the bathroom, but that's because it just peed its pants. Like, okay, yeah, maybe that's true, but I still have a mess to clean up here. Now, is the censorship on Twitter a potential true story? Of course it is. You mean someone using an information or a lack thereof on a social media to sway an election? Where have I heard this before? Here's the point, right now, at this moment in history, it is impossible for any of us to know how to know what to know. Whoa. It's impossible to know facts right now. There's no source that somebody else doesn't discredit. Like if you like them, it's a trusted news source. And if you don't, it's fake news. The point is, who do you trust right now? Politicians? Really? Politicians? The people whose job it is to get votes? It's just a popularity thing to them, you know, just to get votes. That's why no matter what, whoever wins, I'm not going to call them president and vice president. I'm gonna call them homecoming king and queen. The bigger point is this, how do we right now know what is true without bias? How do we determine what actual objective truth is? And the answer is it's gotta be us, man. Read everything, think critically, talk to your neighbors, empathize, listen to each other, talk to all your neighbors, no matter which political sign they have, Biden, Trump, Kanye, talk to them all. Try and get where they're coming from, empathize, try and understand why they believe the things they do, and then ask yourself why you believe the things you do, and try not to have like an existential unraveling while you do it. And after that, get some Jesus and or alcohol and have a laugh because you gotta do something in between crying.